3.2 slope of a line. So in this section, we're going to review how to find the slope of a linear uh, line graphically and algebraically. And also, we will continue reviewing on how to graph a line with the slope and a point. So first, the slope is basically how the line is being slanted. In other words, in the measure of the steepness of steepness of the line. So probably you remember the notations m as a slope, and for graphically we use rise over run. For algebraic purpose later on, when we know two points on a line, we will use this formula y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. So easy to remember because rise is basically talking about up and down that associated with y and then run is basically going right and left so that associated with x. So for example 1, if I give you a graph and wants to find out a uh, graph of a line and wants you to find out what is the slope of it. So first what we're going to do is we're going to locate two good points. What do I mean by that? I want the integers points. Here is a point right here that is 0, 3. And another point that I will pick will be right here, which is 5, 5. Those are two good points. And then after that, we're going to count the rise over run from one point to another. It doesn't matter you count from the left to right or right to left. So I uh, I personally like to count from left to right so that means I'm gonna start from this point right here. So first to reach it to the point on the right I need to go up two units so that means positive two and then going to the right five units so that means positive five. So my slope is rise over run, so we go up two units, so it will be positive two over run is five, so it will be two over five is the slope of this line. Next example. So again, for this line, if I want to find out the slope of this line, we're going to find two good points, so one point will be right here. And another point will be right there. Now we're going to count this slope, which is rise over run from left to right. So starting from this point to reach it to the point on the right, first I have to go down one, two, three units. So going down three units, that is negative three. And to the right, one unit, so that is positive one. So when I write my slope, rise over run, which is negative 3 is my rise, which is going down, is indicate over 1. So if you simplify it, that will be equal to negative 3. So this example sort of tells you all the whole number, you can always rewrite it as a fraction by putting over 1, so you can always count the slope. Next example, example C, going back up. This is a horizontal line. So horizontal line, if I find two points, so let's say this is a point and this is a point, if I find two points. From left to right, this horizontal line, it does not go up or down at all. So therefore, from one point to another point, it doesn't go up and down. So therefore, my rise will be zero. And runs, depending on how uh, where your points are, run in this case will be one, uh, one, two, three points, three units to the right, so it will be three. So it will be what? Zero over three, which give us my final answer is zero. Okay? Zero. So this is not the only horizontal line that gives you slope zero. So any horizontal line, your slope will be always zero. So that 
is something that you need to remember for writing equation purpose later on. Next example, a vertical line. So a vertical line, let's say I have a point right here and I have a point right here. So for the vertical line, from top to bottom, it go down two units, so it will be negative two, right? It will be negative two. But however, however, from top, uh, from one point to another point, it does not go left or right. So that means my run is zero. So any number divided by zero is undefined. So therefore, any vertical line has the slope undefined. All right. So so far we see uh, positive slope, negative slope, slope that is zero, and undefined slopes. So what about if I know two points, and we want to <clears throat> compute the slope. Now, not all the uh, not all the time the points are this good negative three, four, two, negative one, not gonna be integers all the time. Sometimes it could be fraction, sometimes it could be decimal. So I will not recommend you to plot the points and graph, then count the slope. That would be too much work. Okay, when it comes down to like you know fractions or decimal. So we need to know and remember how to compute algebraically. So this formula is slope is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So doesn't really matter which all the pairs you say that x1, y1, you can pick it. So usually the first one that I see, I will say that x sub 1 y sub 1 and automatically the other point become x sub 2 and y sub 2 that will allow us to substitute into the formula accordingly it is very important that you substitute it correctly so in this case my y sub 2 will become negative 1 minus my y sub 1 will be 4 and x sub 2 will be 2 minus my x sub 1 will be negative Three. Then computing this, that gives us negative 5 over 5, which my final answer is equal to negative 1. So that's how we compute the slope algebraically. And here's, our, here's the last method to graph a line which is when we know a slope and a point of the line. So first, what we do is we plot the points. And then from that point, you count the slope to obtain another point on the line so that we can graph it. So usually, if you have an equations, uh, linear equations, put it into slope into set form first and then graphing will be much easier because putting into a slope intercept form right away tells you what is your slope and what is your y intercept is. So example two. Example two asks you to identify the slope and a y intercept. Okay. And then graph. So it asks you two questions. First I need to know what is my slope and y intercept and then graph. So in order to get the slope and y intercept, I will put it into slope intercept form. That means solve for y. So first I add 2x to both sides and divide by 5 to both sides. So I'm going to write it in shortcut, which is dividing by 5 to both of the term. Right? We're dividing every single term. So before previously, I write a divided everything and then split it out the fraction. Now you will skip it that step. So now finally, I got my y is equal to 
2 over 5 x minus 1. So this tells us the slope will be 2 over 5, and my y-intercept is 0, negative 1. Remember, you need to put it into all the pairs. So now, using that, we're going to graph it. So how do we graph it? First, you plot the point. In this case, our point will be y-intercept 0, negative 1, which is right here. And then you're going to count the slope from that point to get another point on the line, which is 2 over 5. That means it's going to go up 2 units and then to the right 5 units. So go up 2 units, 1, 2 units, go to the right 5 units, which will end up right here. That's my another point. If you want more points, you can continue counting from here, which is go up 2 units again and then to the right 5 units. So here's another point that we will get. Okay, so again, let me show to you here, 1 unit, 2 unit up, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 units to the right. So that's how I got that point. Okay, so now what we can do is we're going to connect all these points together to get my line. There we go. Next example. 3x plus 2y is equal to 12. So to find out the slope and uh, slope and the y intercept, first I'm going to rewrite it into slope intercept form. That means solve for y, subtracting 3x on both sides first, and then divided by 2 to both sides, which is negative 3 over 2x plus 12 over 2, which gives us y is equal to negative 3 over 2x plus 6. So this tells us my slope will be negative 3 over 2, and my y-intercept will be 0, 6. So now, graphing it, first I'm going to plot the point which is my y-intercept, 0, 6, right here. And then I'm going to count the slope. This time, uh, I can look at this negative 3 over 2 as negative 3 over 2 like this, or 3 over negative 2. So I personally want to rewrite it into this form because whenever we read it, we read rise over run, so I want to take care of that negative in the beginning. So that means it will be go down three units and then to the right two units. If you write it the other way, that will be go up three units and then to the left two units. So it doesn't matter which way you, you know, count it, it will be the same line. Okay? So go down three units, that means Here's 1, 2, 3, and to the right 2 units, 1, 2. So this is where we got another point. So now, if you want, you can continue counting you know, the slope to get more points so that you can get a better graph. So if I go down 3 more units to the right 2 units, then this will be ended up right here. So therefore, I got my equation of the line. So this is the last method to graph a line. And on the test, you have to be careful because I will ask you specifically which method to use. Okay. And lastly, you need to know the following facts about the slope of the line. So if two lines are parallel, we know that the slope of the lines are how uh, they are slanted. Okay. So if two lines are parallel, that means they will be slanting the same way, so their slope will be the same. So you need to remember parallel lines have the same slope, which is what? The slope 1 is equal to slope 2. Perpendicular. If two lines are perpendicular, 
meaning two line intersect such in a way that they will form a 90 degree angle then their slopes are negative reciprocal of each other so that means if your slope one is m sub one the other one will be negative reciprocal of it negative one over m okay negative one over m sub one this should be m sub one so this whole thing is basically equal to m2 okay m2 so so make sure you correct that subscript okay it should be m sub one so now we want to determine whether the lines are parallel perpendicular or neither so example uh first example give it to you in one line is in standard standard form and the second line is in slope intercept form so we're not going to try to graph it to see the lines are parallel or perpendicular we're going to use this facts okay these facts which is if the slope is the same they are parallel if the slopes are negative reciprocal they are perpendicular otherwise neither so that means line one i need to put it into slope intercept form so that i can see what is my slope so first you subtract two x on both sides and divide by five to both sides that give me negative two x negative 2x plus 5 and we divide it by 5 to both terms see 5 to both terms so that gave me y is equal to negative 2 over 5x plus 1 so notice that my line my line 1 has slope negative 2 over 5 and my line 2 this is the slope of line 2 which is slope of line 2 is equal to 2 over 5 first of all they are not the same slope second they are not negative reciprocal so therefore line 1 and line 2 this is neither they are neither parallel or perpendicular So, next example. So, line one, you want to put it into slope intercept form 5x plus 4y equal to 1. So, subtracting 5x to both sides. So, that gives me my y is equal to negative 5x plus 1 divided by 4 divided by 4. So therefore, the slope 1 is equal to negative 5 over 4. So let's take a look at on line 2. That is 4x minus 5y equal to 3. So subtracting 4x on both sides, that will give me negative 4x plus 3. Then we're going to divide both sides by negative 5, so my y will be equal to negative 4x plus 3 divided by negative 5 divided by negative 5 so which is y is equal to 4 over 5 x minus 3 over 5 so the slope 2 is equal to 4 over 5. 
Now this time you can see that my slope one is negative five over four, slope two is four over positive four over five. So reciprocal of five over four is four over five, and then opposite of that, right? Negative of negative will become positive. So therefore, my line one is perpendicular. To line one, line two. Okay, so line one perpendicular to line two because they have negative reciprocal slope. So take a look at this. My slope one is negative five four, and if I do negative reciprocal of the negative five four, that will become positive four over. Five, which is slope two, so that's what we talk about: negative reciprocal. Okay, that will be the end of this session.